All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jeff, and I'm from Keybuild Software. I think, uh, Jason, you want to start off with a little bit of an intro before we head into it? Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jason Brown. I'm the Client Success Manager here at VBS. And before we get started, I just wanted to let everyone know that um, VBS is offering a COVID-19 response kit. You can visit our website, um, or if you have an email from me, if you click the, the link below, my signature will take you to the website and you can look at all the offers that we're giving back to all our employees during this time. So I wanted to make everyone aware of that. Um, and uh, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Jeff, the world renowned uh, sales engineer at QBuild um, to go over our CADMIC demo. Take it away, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. I'm not sure about world renowned, but I'm definitely a sales engineer at QBuild. Um, I will be the one running you through, through the Catlink presentation today. We'll be uh, going through a bit of a demo, as well as going through some of our latest features um, that we've incorporated over the past uh, maybe a quarter to, to half a year. Um, some exciting stuff happening there. Um, as well as I wanted to make an introduction to one of our newest products, Nestlink, and tell you about the use cases for that as well. Um, my next slide here is the agenda. Um, so intro, CADLink, Nestlink. We're going to talk about some case studies and testimonials as well. A lot of uh, customers like to ask us about, um, you know, what sort of um, ROI should they reasonably expect out of uh, investing in CADLink? Um, you know, what have uh, other customers' experience been, been, have been working with us? So, um, I thought I'd include it here, um, and uh, just to give you guys that uh, information. So just a quick introduction about who we are. So CADLINK is the name of the product. It's developed by Cubalt Software, um, and we are based out of Toronto in uh, Canada. And we've been specializing in CAD's ERP integration to over uh, 15 years now. We began in 2002 with our first integration. Uh, beyond CADLINK, we have a, a suite of other software, too, that uh, really aims to uh, form that bridge between engineering, a manufacturer's engineering department, as well as uh, the uh, manufacturing and production. So primarily, that's CADLINK, linking CAD systems, PDMs, PLM systems uh, to uh, ERP. We got uh, systems for ECN. We got systems for uh, configurator. If you want to integrate your configurator to a CAD system, timekeeping uh, or project timekeeping, um, you know, part surfer and CAD connectors, which is integration between CAD to PLM. Uh, we live in that space, uh, in the integration space between these applications. We'll largely talk about CADLINK, but if any of those other systems um, uh, you find interesting too, feel free to reach out. My contact details will be at the end of this webinar. Also, that being said, um, at the end of the webinar, there's also going to be time for some Q&A. Uh, GoToWebinar does have a questions uh, box, so we can submit some of your questions. And uh, I'll go through them at the end. I won't go through them throughout the presentation, but at the end, there'll be some time for me to uh, catch up on the questions and uh, you know, be interactive in that way in this demo. We are uh, a Enforce solution partner. Uh, we're the only certified and solution, uh, supported CAD integrator for both Infor Visual and uh, CSI. Um, so if you, uh, I think primarily our audience base, you're probably using Visual, but uh, if you're thinking about CSI, if you are on CSI, this is compatible with that solution too. So it's sold and supported um, by Infor and the channel partners. Uh, and implemented and maintained by us at Qbuild. And we've been doing this for uh, over a decade, Infor Solutions. In fact, Infor Visual was probably one of the first five uh, systems that we integrated to. Like I mentioned, we began in 2002. It was just a simple linking system back then to uh, AutoCAD with a, um, oops, with a simple build materials database. Uh, but today, we've expanded that repertoire. We've included over uh, 40 different CAD, PDM, and PLM systems on uh, the market. So, of course, you got the popular mechanical CAD systems like SOLIDWORKS, Creo, um, 
uh, in venture. Uh, but beyond that, we've got some other systems in our portfolio too, electrical CAD systems like Altium and Mentor Graphics or CAD. Um, we got some more, I guess, niche CAD systems like Tecla, which is for construction. Uh, beyond that, we also have PDM and PLM systems because bill of materials doesn't just live in the CAD model. Uh, once you expand to PDM and PLM systems, uh, that's where I think the bill of materials data will reside. So we got uh, you know, our gold certification with SOLIDWORKS PDM. We got uh, Autodesk Vault down. We're Autodesk partner as well. You name it, we can probably integrate that to your Infor Visual and automate that process of syncing bill materials data from your engineering application, whichever it might be, to Visual. So let's talk about CadLink and uh, new CadLink features. For those of you who are less familiar, CadLink is a live link between your CAD or PDM or PLM to Infor Visual or Cloud Suite Industrial CSI. Um, so what it does is that it gets bill materials data out from your engineering system, uh, the data that the engineers are already working with and entering into that application, using that to compare against what is in your ERP visual, uh, showing you all the differences so you can see live what uh, you know what's new, what's different. Then ultimately, you're allowed to save and push and create new parts and engineering masters inside of visual while sending data back to CAD as well because it's a bi-directional data exchange. So you get to synchronize the items and bills and materials and the value proposition is that this happens in seconds rather than half an hour, 40 minutes, you know, hours, even longer, okay? So in my demo, we'll see this load for a bill materials that maybe has 20 new parts and that'll take just seconds. And that's a time saving of maybe half an hour. In the most extreme cases, I've worked with a client where using CadLink cuts two weeks out of a project timeline for these massive, massive bills materials. So that's one of the key value propositions here is the time savings. And who is this for? This is for manufacturing of complex engineering custom products. So if you have a large bill materials that's very hefty and hard to maintain, um, or if you and or if you are um, in the industry of creating engineered or custom products where you have constant bill material changes and you have constant engineering changes and you have um, the need to push new bills and materials into visual all the time, this is for you. So let's take a look. I'm going to go through a Catholic demo. And then as well, we're going to highlight some of our latest features as well, such as document attachments, and so that you will be able to, um, whether you're new to Catlink or if you've seen Catlink before, but you haven't seen it uh, more recently, you'll be able to get something out of it. So let me uh, switch my um, view here to the demo environment I got here. So. I have now the SOLIDWORKS model pulled up here. I'm going to show you an integration between SOLIDWORKS and Visual today. I got my SOLIDWORKS pulled up here as well. I also have my Visual environment, which I have running in a virtual machine. And the end result of this is that I'm going to get the bill materials data from this model, this entire multi-level bill materials, and have that populate and create um, a full-blown engineering master with legs and all these new parts created as well. So this all begins in engineering. So let's say the engineer has just finished making some changes to this bill of materials. They've created some new parts and added it to the bomb. They've swapped out a few components. They've renamed components, changed the description, quantity, and stuff. The engineers work. They do that inside of SOLIDWORKS. But as you probably know, this needs to be reflected, and the changes need to happen inside of Visual so that production, your purchaser, your shop floor folks, all those people, they also get the latest and greatest bomb too from the engineer. So to initiate that, you have the model open to the right configuration, because in SOLIDWORKS you can have multiple configurations. So you pick the one that you want the build materials to sync with, you go to the toolbar, and you can launch SOLIDWORKS, uh, you can launch CadLink right from here. So it's a seamless experience. You're not hopping to another application. You're not connecting to you know, uh, in another 
remote server or anything complex like that. It's just seamless with SolidWorks. You have the model open, you go to the toolbar, and our add-ins are right there. And you can pick one of any of these three options, and all three of these are available to you out of the box. You have uh, the Engineering Master Build Materials, which allows you to um, create and update existing engineering masters and parts. You have the work order bomb here, which allows you to create a new work order once you've provided a sales order ID, as well as a quote, if you wanna create a quote bomb inside of Visual. Once I click on any of these, what Catalyst is gonna do is get all the bill materials data from this model and begin comparing it to what's currently inside of Visual. And what I mean by that is that each one of these components here all right, these are all the subcomponents of the um, model. Has data stored in it, part numbers, descriptions, revisions, unit of measure. Catherine's going to get that from all of these parts and begin comparing it to what's inside of Visual to help me see and understand what's new and what's different. So that's going to be it's going to happen very quickly here. I click this and it's gonna connect and compare. So no data is being saved or transferred yet. All it's doing is comparing and loading up a screen for me to see and understand the differences. We don't want this to happen in the background and uh, you do not have visibility of what's being changed in visual, what's being removed from a bomb, what may be being updated. This screen here, when we go through this, you're gonna, it's going to help you understand exactly what the changes will take place. And so you can review it and make changes as needed. So what are we seeing here on the screen? First off, we have the structure of the bill materials. On the left-hand side, we see the structure of the bomb. We have the top level, which is the, uh, of course, the, the top level of the mold. The mold has uh, subcomponents, and some of them have subcomponents of their own. So it's a multi-level bomb. Each one of these lines represents a part record. Um, and the colored highlighting that exists on the screen shows what's new, what's different between what's in SOLIDWORKS right now versus what is inside of Visual. Any line that's not highlighted, like this top level and some of these subcomponents here, mean that they're all, they are already existing inside of Visual. So these are existing components that perhaps we've created when we uh, had initially pushed this into visual, or maybe they are used in other products um, that, uh, that, that uh, use the same components. So uh, any line that's not highlighted means that it already exists. On the other hand, any line that's green means that it is gonna be newly created inside of visual. So, these two components here, this entire sub-assembly here, all that. When we save, Catholic will create each one of these part records in Visual's part maintenance using data coming directly from my SOLIDWORKS model or from some entries that I'll be able to enter from the right-hand side of this screen. Okay, so um, not only that, when we create these parts inside of Visual, it's also going to create those parent-child relationships too. So it's gonna assign, for example, these six components to an operation, and that operation is assigned to this 1.5. So the structure is maintained as well. Not only are we gonna create parts, it's going to also, um, it's also going to uh, uh, maintain those structures as we carry it through. So that is the, uh, the green parts. Any line that has yellow means that there is a discrepancy between what is uh, saved in CAD versus what is inside of the uh, visual today. So for example, if we were to look at this yellow field here, when CADLIN compared the description of this line in CAD versus what the description is inside of visual, it knows it does not match, and so it highlights it. And with this, I can right click and see what the discrepancy is. So in CAD, the, uh, uh, the description for this says bezel mold base with a shorthand word assembly, whereas for in visual, it says just bezel mold base. And from here, you can do one of two things. I can say, I want my CAD description to be pushed into visual. 
And when you save now, this goes and updates visual description with what I have in CAD. Or I can change it back. I can say, I want my ERP description. And now when I save, this ERP description goes back to CAD and updates that there. So it's bi-directional. It's able to have data flow into visual and update visual data, or you can have visual data flow back to CAD and update it that way. The third option is I can click into it and enter a brand new description. So maybe we're supposed to spell out the word assembly in full. Now when we save, this pushes bi-directionally. It's going to go back to um, CAD, update the description there, and it's going to go into visual and update the part record there as well. So the whole purpose of this, the goal of this yellow field is to show you where data is not matching for you know fields of data that are already populated in both environments, and then also give the opportunity to synchronize and uh, have a uniform value for both environments. And by doing so, that's how you're going to cut down on mistakes, and you're going to reduce confusion. You know, No more having someone who's looking up the two records and, and not knowing which one to trust. And then you know that person's now uh, trying to flag down the engineer who entered this part and you know trying to ask them why it's different. Catholic will ensure it's the same, and so that you have just one set of data to work off with, and uh, there's less mistakes that will happen that way. So that's the green, that's the yellow. In the case of quantity, quantity is a CAD-driven value. So this is an exception to, I guess, what I've explained uh, just recently. Quantity, we're going to take a CAD quantity and push that into um, ERP. We're not going to push an ERP quantity back to CAD. It just doesn't uh, make sense that way. Three more colors on the grid. The first of which is this red field. Okay, So red represents that there is a validation check or validation error going on here. For those of you who are familiar with visual, you know that there's rules that the interface enforces on the user. Uh, when you're creating a new part, you have to enter a description. That description cannot exceed a certain number of characters, depending on your version of visual. Um, and uh, you can't use special characters, you know, perhaps dollar signs or percents, things like that. Um, Catlink, well, SolidWorks, first off, does not necessarily care about what visuals interface rules are. You can enter whatever you want, or you can enter nothing. In this case, I entered nothing, and Catlink did not pick up a value from my SolidWorks uh, description. But Catlink knows that this is required by a visual in order for me to create a part, which is what I'm trying to do here. And so it highlights it red. And as a user, now I know there's something going on here. I got an empty description, and visual doesn't like that. In fact, while this red field's here, the save button is disabled, meaning I, I can't click it, I can't perform the sync right now. So all I need to do is come into here, click, and just enter a description. And now that this value is no longer empty, when I save now, this will be um, the save button is first off is now enabled. I can I can do the save. And now when I save, this will be the description that's used to push into visual as well. We're going to write that description back to CAD as well. Once again, that bidirectional sync. So the data um, that's being transferred is uh, fully validated. Once again, we're checking for character limits, special characters. Um, if your parent and your child are the same uh, part number, you know, visual doesn't really like that either. All these sort of things Catholic will check for to make sure you're pushing good and safe data into the visual database. Uh, there's these gray lines down here, and there's another color that corresponds with that, which is a blue line. Both the gray and the blue line represent a component that's on the visual bomb right now, but is not in CAD. The reason why there's two colors, though, is that is there's typically two, two reasons why this happens. The first of which is that in a previous uh, version of this bomb, let's say in a previous revision, Maybe this was on my CAD model. And when we saved, this was brought over and pushed into visual. But since then, we replaced that part, or we took it off our model. And so what happens here now is that when CadLink saves, CadLink will, with these gray lines, remove them from the visual engineering master so that the bomb will be back in sync. 
not deleting them. Catholic will never delete a record from visual. We're just zeroing out these quantities. We're just removing them from this engineering master. So gray lines are components to be removed. On the other hand, you may have some components that are on your visual engineering master that's not in CAD. Uh, and that's common in the case of consumables. Um, oftentimes, engineers will not model things like nuts, bolts, and washers. Even more commonly, things like paint, grease, user manuals, and packaging. No one has a CAD model for the paint that they're going to apply to um, the machine or the, the, the product that they're designing. But you need that in your visual engineering master because you got to order it, you got to um, you got to apply it, and so on. So to add that to the bomb, you just right click and add a manual part. And now we get this blue line at the bottom here. And with the click of this square, I can do a live search into visual. And now we're going to be able to um, pull up any components in my visual uh, part master and add it to this engineering master. So let's say that um, I'm looking for a bolt. OK, just put the word bolt in the description, click search. These are all the bolts in my visual database. Um, and I just need to pick the one I like hit accept, and now it's added to my bomb. So let's say I need five of these. Since this is, a non, this is, this is not a non-CAD component, I can specify and change the quantity here, whereas otherwise, these quantities here are coming from CAD. So with this blue line here now, this will be inserted and maintained on my build materials. So the difference here is this. Both the blue and the gray, they are components that are not in CAD. Blue we will maintain in visual in your engineering master. Gray, we will remove from the engineering master so it matches up with CAD. So now that we've gone through the colors, you look at this now, and hopefully you get a clear understanding of what's new and what's different. Without this interface, what users are stuck doing is that they're pulling up SOLIDWORKS, the model or the drawing, maybe an Excel export. They have that pulled up on one screen. And uh, they might have visual pulled up on another, maybe the um, engineering master, this screen here. And they're trying to eyeball the differences between these two environments and trying to figure out, do you have all the same components in both environments? Do I have matching descriptions and quantities and all that? It's a very time-consuming and error-prone process. How easy is it for a part to be missed? Instead, Catlink programmatically highlights the differences for you. So that just by you know looking at what is highlighted here, you can pinpoint exactly what is changing as a result of the save, um, or just overall what the differences are from your CAD design versus the engineering master inside of Visual. So that's the first key feature we want to highlight here: the colored highlighting. Next up, we're going to talk about some of the columns we see. We've talked about the left-hand side. We talked about the structure of the bomb. So it's a multi-level bill of materials. We got the save checkbox here. So you can control line by line what you do and, and don't want to save, for example. So if I don't want to save these three parts, I can just exclude them. I have a checkbox here for legs. So if any of these I want to designate as legs, all I have to do is just to click and assign them and designate them as legs. We got important part information like part number, description, revision, year measure, and quantity. Um, obviously, key data to specify a part or an engineering master inside of visual. And then beyond that, we have more visual specific fields, things like uh, product code, commodity, barricade purchase stock. So the first thing you know is that you're not limited to just what you see here on the screen. Virtually any field in part maintenance or in the engineering master uh, card you'll be able to add and expose on the screen. So if you want to map more fields between CAD's ERP, if you want to map less, you can configure that on your own. The other thing you need to know is that there's multiple ways that you'll be able to assign the values that you see here. So of course, you can always click into these and assign them manually. You can click in and say, oh, this is generic, or you can say it's an electronic component, for example. But a more complex way that we can do it, or rather a more, um, a more uh, elegant way that you can do it, is that if you go into the settings, you can go into the logic settings here, 
And this is one of our latest features, our um, logic module. It's from here that you're going to be able to build your own code and automate some of the behaviors and features that uh, Catlink will employ. So I have here, this is an example for operation templates, but it works the same way for um, these other things too. You can set up a condition that says if, okay, if this is assembly it's, and it is, is new, so it's a new assembly, then do this. Set its product code to generic, set its commodity code to this, or set, in my case, an operation template where I'll be borrowing an existing engineering master's operations and applying it now to all my new assemblies. So the possibilities with this are are um, are endless. You can build your own code to uh, if you know if it's a new part um, and if it begins with these characters, you know, set the fabricated to true or warehouse to this and so on. So this allows you to configure tailor Catlin to work closer to your needs and save you. Um, you know, clicks on this interface without having to come to us to customize uh, these sort of minor uh, behaviors into your Catlink. So that's how you'd uh, interface with these here. The other thing that's interesting to know is that you see when we click into these values, it loads a table for you to um, pick the, uh, the, the value of this product code. This table here is loaded directly from Visual. In fact, all this data here either comes live from Visual or CAD, um, and none of it is uh, stored in any external database. Catholic itself has no database or server of its own. Everything here is read either from CAD or from ERP. So we're not introducing another repository of, uh, of BOM data. So that's the bill materials grid. Another important thing to know when we click uh, on this hide panel or show panel here is uh, this is where you'll be able to assign your routings and operations. So uh, when we're talking about building engineering masters and work orders, um, the thing that glues, I guess, keeps or keeps the uh, engineering masters with the parts is the operations. The parts are assigned to operations and operations are assigned to the engineering master or the work order. Um, so it's in this panel here where we configure that. This is a similar interface to what we see on the left-hand side in terms of the hierarchy, the structure of the bomb. The difference, though, is that you see these gears, and these gears represent the uh, routings and operations um, that we can apply to this bill of materials. Um, and we can see here that through 10 through 90, we already got some pre-populated data. This came from my logic settings. Okay, from here we are. I'm borrowing a uh, template in operation from A8000. So there's an existing engineering master in my visual with this 10 through 90 that Catlink has already automatically applied to all my new assemblies. So I've saved the time from having to click through and build this manually. Though if I do want to edit this, I can delete, I can add, for example. All right, so I still get the ability to fine tune and change things as needed. And with that, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping. So any component here, if this is not assigned to op 10, but something else, I just need to drag it. And now it's under op 65. Or um, in a more complex scenario, we might be able to drag a few of these to different bills materials so that they are assigned to different uh, different operations. And by doing so, you'll be able to have that be reflected inside a visual with these materials assigned to the corresponding um, routing or operation sequence that we have. So with that all being said, you know we've been talking about this for maybe a good 15 to 20 minutes now, but it's a matter of just clicking the Save button here. And it goes ahead and makes us changes inside of visual. So in a matter of seconds, the data has been transferred over. And all we have to do is come into here click refresh, and we see the updated bill materials. So if I expand the screen here, you can see that there's a lot more new data that we've introduced now to this engineering master. We got some components that were removed from the top level. We got 
all these new parts that were just created, this uh, this one here was the entirely new engineering master and components we had just uh, added. Um, what else is there? We have that description that was updated. So if I come into here, we can see that uh, the description was updated from bezel mold base to bezel mold base assembly. And this engineering master is now all good to go. All of that, once again, we've been talking about it for 15 to 20 minutes, but as a Catlink user, you come in, review the changes, click save, in a matter of two minutes, five minutes maybe, you're on your way to your next design instead of an hour or more. So another thing I want to show here is the document attachments, which is one of our uh, news features. So I come back into CadLink here. I just need to uh, enable it. Oops. So let's just do that. And we're just going to restart CadLink here. One other thing is that if I come back into the settings here, the description was also updated. This was bezel mold based. This used to be ASSY for the shorthand for assembly. Now it is spelled out in full. So Catlink pushed this data back. So if I reload Catlink again, we're going to see some different colored highlighting because once again, largely the bill materials is saved. These three are green because I chose not to save them. I excluded them. And this blue here is that both that I had, I had added. And on the right-hand side here, we have the document attachments. And this is the other new feature that I want to highlight here today, is that alongside bill materials, we're also going to be able to push the actual file locations of these uh, PRT and ASM files into the document attachments in part maintenance. So if I come into here, these can automatically be attached, which is why there's the one here. Um, meaning that the reference, the document file path of this will now be pushed into visual and that's automatically um, uh, fetched from the, uh, from the file there. But also you can browse and add virtually any file that you would like and include it here. And they will end up showing up um, in the document attachments. So they'll be included over here. So that's one of the latest features that we've added along with the custom logic module, uh, two new things that will help our clients save uh, more time going through the steps of get, bringing bill materials data over into, into visual, uh, you know, being able to tailor your experience with the logic module and the document attachments, which uh, will save you time from having to manually um, key in those, uh, those file paths and such. So let's head back into our presentation here. Moving along to the benefits of Catholic. Um, just to recap on this, our goal here is to reduce your engineering costs. Instead of having to enter the data once into CAD and then re-enter that into visual, uh, thereby having a double data entry, uh, we're going to leverage the existing data that's already been entered into your SOLIDWORKS and use that to create your parts and engineering masters inside of Visual. Not only that, we're aiming to improve accuracy. So instead of having you know, the, the error-prone step of um, entering this data manually into Visual, uh, by using the application to do it, you're going to have higher accuracy, thereby you can purchase with more confidence, reduce scrap, and uh, all these manufacturing issues when you're working with incorrect data. Next up, I want to talk a bit about our newest tool, uh, Nestlink. And this has caught on and how there's a lot of traction with this. Um, this is a tool that's integrating um, visual with uh, nesting applications. So if you are using Sigma Nest, if you are using ProNest, Anything that is, uh, you know, nesting your your cut operations, um, this is uh, this may be applicable to you. So, for those of you who may not know what is nesting, I certainly did not know uh, just a few months ago. It's a process of laying out cutting patterns uh, to minimize raw material waste. So, if you think about a cookie cutter, you have a you know set amount of dough, 
Um, and uh, you, you want to maximize the dough when you are uh, cutting all these shapes and you want to figure out what's the most optimal way, the most efficient way to get um, y use the least amount of material for uh, the sheets you're trying to cut. Of course, in manufacturing, it looks a little different. Uh, chances are you're working with a steel sheet and a cutter and there is a nesting application uh, driving this cutter um, to optimize the shapes and the areas that they need to cut. These tools are Sigma Nest, Pro Nest, um, and others that uh, we have integrated to. Um, and so uh, that's uh, that's what nesting is. Now, what, nest, what nesting aims to solve here are the following challenges. So let's say your company has won a huge deal and you now need to build these 50 machines, okay? With these 50 machines, that uh, that drives demand. You now have to nest, let's say, or Ned the Nester now has to nest 100 sheet metal parts for the laser cutter. That's 100 work orders they have to create in the nesting software, and they'd be doing that by hand. Chances are Ned's going to miss lunch for that. So the first challenge is that with lots of demand, uh, there is a, a huge time commitment, a huge time investment required to then enter that data into the nesting application and uh, and, and be able to utilize uh, the, the efficiency uh, of the nesting software. So there's a manual data entry from visual to the nesting software. The other challenge from Anna, the analyst, they she wants to track work orders better inside of visual. Um, Ned's nesting software knows how much stock was used, how much scrap was generated, um, and how much time was spent. If we had that data in visual, you know, you can optimize a lot of other processes. But what am I saying? Ned already has no time to do that because he's busy entering the data by hand uh, into the nesting software to even get the parts cut. Um, so there's no way that data is getting back into visual. So the other end of the challenge is the uh, the reciprocal of that, getting the analytics from the nesting software back into visual to drive uh, the other areas of visual. So those are the two challenges that we're aiming to solve here. It's going to be a bi-directional link that connects these two applications. It runs in the background. It will automatically see demand in visual work orders. So um, in a few cases, we'd be able to see the, uh, let's say, a cut operation in your um, visual work order and automatically send the parts under that cut operation to the nesting application so that it can begin the optimization process. It'll transfer both the part numbers and part files. And then it's going to automatically record the material and labor consumption and send it back to the work order. So it completes the loop there. I don't have a demo of it today, um, but we want to get this message out there because we want you to get in contact with us. And we're gonna show you a private demonstration of, of how this works. So once again, if you're using a nesting application and you have the same challenges that I've described there in terms of getting parts out of visual work order into Nestlink or getting Nestlink data back into visual, get in touch. We'd love to speak with you. The last part here is that I want to go over some case studies and uh, testimonials here now. So what have our customers been saying and experiencing um, by using Calvin? And we have two case studies here to go through. Um, and uh, we'll start with the first one with uh, a visual customer, Blue Giant. Um, they're a global leader. They do uh, loading dock systems and material handling equipment. Uh, and they're based in uh, Ontario with uh, a branch in North Carolina as well. So they've been using Visual for quite a long time. Um, they've been using it since 06. Uh, so they've had 12 years of Visual experience before they implemented CADLink. We got in there with CADLink in 2018. So with that, we're able to have this sort of before and after picture. Before CADLink, they reportedly spent 90 to 300 hours per week on bill materials data entry. They're highly customized, so they um, have new designs basically per customer, and um, they often have these large bills of materials like that machine we we're just looking at earlier. If you evaluate that to a time cost of $45 per hour, we're talking about $200,000 to $700,000 per year spent on um, data entry into 
uh, into visual, right? That's a pretty significant amount of money, of course. Their method of data entry was that the lines were entered one by one by the engineer. The engineer themselves, once they're done designing, they go into visual and they're creating these work orders, these, uh, these engineering masters uh, by hand. Their structures were suboptimal. They had a single line operation, unlike the one that I had, where we had the you know nine operations, for example, and we we're dragging and dropping between them. They just had single line operation and they list the entire material list underneath. So no structure or anything like that. And lastly, when it came to data accuracy, they had incorrect sequences. And of course, uh, operational sequences weren't correct because they only had that single operation. And that had effects downstream in production. So they experienced that from, um, what was that? Oh, uh, 2006 to 2018. 2018, we implemented CadLink. And uh, they've been using Catlink for the past two years. This case study we put together just um, earlier this year, uh, January. So they've had a good uh, year and a half to two years uh, using Catlink. So the after picture looks like this. They reduced their data entry time from 90 to 300 hours to 30 to 120 hours. So because of how intricate and, and custom their stuff is, it's still, you know, it's not nothing. It's you know, it's no, it's not no time at all. But it's a 60 to 75 percent reduction in their data entry time, which on average means that Catholic is saving them three hundred thousand dollars per year. Okay, um, and I mean, I'm not going to share pricing over the uh, over this webinar, but Catholic costs nowhere near that amount. So their uh, return on investment, their uh, time to value, um, very good. They upload a full assembly in one shot. And uh, now instead of a single line operation with material list, they have operational sequences and uh, full bills of materials um, that are a true reflection of how they manufacture and how it's modeled. As well as the uh, data accuracy aspect of it, um, it forces consistency. Now the engineer needs to think about, well, okay, the, 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 the data I put in my CAD, this is going to be uh, seen in visual now because Catlink is establishing that link. And so they have proper nomenclature and they have consistency between how they're doing things and uh, means that they have better data practices. Some testimonials here. Uh, I mean, these are quite long paragraphs, but the key point here is that you know we've they made Catlink an indispensable piece of uh, their process, and also that uh, we have quick response time. When you work with QBuild, when you engage with a project with us, we guarantee that uh, we will have same day responses for you. You will have a dedicated project manager and a developer who are assigned to your project, who know your models, who know your Catlink who know your environment, and they will have a same day response uh, for you. Another, I guess, funnier thing to note with uh, Blue Giant themselves is that they've told me that they've made Catlink uh, sort of like a verb in their uh, in their production now. Have they Catlinked this bomb yet? Which I think kind of puts us at the same level as uh, you know Google, for example. So that's kind of a <laughs> uh, funny story there. Our other case study is with KTech. So KTech is in Manitoba. Um, and the difference here is that they've used Catlink as long as they've used Visual. When they purchased Visual, Catlink was sold alongside it. Um, so they've used uh, both from the get-go. So unlike Blue Giant, we don't really have a before picture, but we still have some key data here that we can work with. Um, from our contact there, they said that the manual entry would have taken us several times as long, uh, which would be at least another full-time employee. So if we're talking about full-time employee, going by that $45,000 over five years, you know, an engineer, uh, estimated costs for the company, $470,000. For them, the Kaplan cost over five years, okay? This is not the upfront first year cost or anything, over five years for them at their licensing level and everything, $30,000, all right? This of course changes based on implementation, number of licenses, a bunch of factors. So keep that in mind. The ROI here I'm talking about is 600%, okay? And they got their money back within two months of using Catlink. That's the qual quantitative aspect of it. The qualitative aspect is that 
once again, data accuracy to get the right bomb entered and reduce mistakes and immediate bomb availability. So as soon as the engineer is done modeling in CAD, that build materials, you can just use CADLINK and push in and within seconds, it is inside of visual. You don't have to, the person in production, let's say if it's a rush job, no longer has to wait for the engineer to be ready or if the engineer is away or unavailable, there's that delay between when it becomes available inside of visual. With CADLINK, there is no delay. It can happen right away. What do they have to say? You know, it seamlessly pushes their vault data. They use Autodex Vault uh, into uh, Visual. Um, it's, in, it's an integral part of their business process um, and has saved them time since they first using it. Uh, and about working with us, once again, a straightforward implementation process and quick to respond. Uh, once again, key thing that our customers highlight being a great thing about working with us is quick to respond. So what are some next steps here? Um, schedule follow-up with us, a, a custom demo. We, you've now seen this working with um, our demo model. We would love to do the same demo for you with your um, actual CAD files. So whether you got Creo files, Solid Edge, Solid Works, and Venture, uh, get us a sample. We'll run through this demo with your data and you can see it working with your part numbers, your descriptions, your data, and it being pushed into visual and see that uh, take place, all right? So you can coordinate that with your uh, VBS rep, whether that is uh, you know David Jr., if that is Jason Brown, get in contact with them. They'll be able to um, set you up the meeting with me as well as get you uh, pricing information. And with that, that uh, wraps up my webinar. Uh, we do have some time for Q&A. The, uh, the question box here is currently empty, um, but if uh, any of you have any questions, you can enter them now. I'll see them and I'll be able to respond to them uh, as they roll in. We'll just give a couple minutes uh, for that. And I guess, Jason, do you have any uh, closing thoughts, uh, things to wrap things up while we see if any questions roll in? No, well, if, um, if anyone has any questions, you're more than welcome to uh, either answer them, ask them now, or you can actually just email me or call me. I'm happy to uh, get you in touch with Je Jeff and his team um, to either set something up or uh, be able to get the answers for you that you're looking for. Great. But I appreciate it, Jeff and everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today and giving that great presentation. Um, I think World Renown fits you right. Nice, Jeff. I think it, it fits nice. I would use that more often. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. Um, no questions have rolled in, but once again, uh, again, contact with uh, your customer care rep, and uh, you know we'll schedule uh, any other follow-ups to uh, get you what you need. So, thank you all, and uh, have a great uh, rest of your day, everyone. Thanks, everyone.